Most important tips to improve your Warhammer painting? Whatever I'm not happy with, it's done now. So I might as well see what it looks like if I try and finish it. And then the model is kind of never in that state of not looking good. Do you know what I mean? Because you're like, oh, it just looks unfinished. Viewing it like that is why I've managed to paint actually for the last week or so. I honestly use it all the time. It's something that's really important and part of my painting process. Once you start using one, you, it's really difficult to not use one. Just to having that switch on how you view it has, has had a positive impact. It's just immediately changed how I feel about painting entirely. We've actually done some hobby in the same week, all three of us. Yeah. Unprecedented. Yeah. Well, sort of precedented. I feel like we've done two episodes on the bounce that sort of left us all no choice but to actually paint. <laughs> we have done, we did, we did like, the challenges. Because we did, no, we did like um, the motivation episode. Yeah. Um, which it was hard to walk away from and not be like, okay, I might as well paint tonight. <laughs> and then we did the, uh, yeah, the thing about like setting your goals and stuff and, and getting started now and, and not waiting until the new year. And, and then we this. had the Tyranids Challenge and the Ultramarines Challenge. I just mean in the last couple, the last couple oh, okay, of episodes, it's yeah, yeah. hard not to like walk away and then paint. Um, I just can't think of a scenario where we've all come in and be like, oh, yeah, I've been painting over the weekend. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, actually, it's actually happened. Yeah. What have you been up to then? Uh, so I didn't actually do any painting. You two did painting. I didn't. Um, oh, I thought you did. No. It's still a hobby though. Mm, yeah. yeah. I, I kind of swayed off of my initial um, my initial statement from last episode. Um, still going to do the Bellanger Army. However, I was at my painting desk and I spied my one of my first models, one of my first models I painted, which is the uh, Amordi 9 Guard Sergeant. And as much as I do love Steel Legion, I am going to do a Mordian army. So I just want to point out switched up already. that I'm documented as being correct on this. I said, when he said about doing the Admech army, I said, there's no way you're going to do an army. So you're going to paint one model. You're going to be done with I it. I told you. I that happened. I scratched then he's like, I'm going to do a Blood Angels army. I'm like, there's no way you're going to do a Blood Angels army. I think then, now that, he's doing Mordians. No, no, no. I think I scratched the, the, the Blood Angels army is still on though. It's right? still on, so That's, yeah. a, that's in, that, on the back that's, burner. That's still on, I, yeah. I think I think if you don't... Um, because you didn't paint an Admech model, did you? Yeah, I did, yeah. Painted one. Oh, you painted one? Yeah, yeah I've done oh, one. You see what I'm saying? I told you. Yeah. I, yeah. I was going to try and save you there because I was going to say, if you don't actually no, start, then I think I, you're allowed to I, flip I said, your ideas as much as possible. I agree with that, but he did it. So I said I was scratching an itch, you know, which I did with the Admech model that I painted. And now yeah. I'm free to... Talked him off that ledge. He could have had a massive uh, pile of Admech yeah. just sat there in the box. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, yeah, you got your, you got your Mordians... I just fell in love with the models again. And I, I I managed to pick up a couple of boxes at Warboot, didn't I? So like I'd literally just I was like, right, well they're there. Uh, I've got I've got still Legion models anyway, so I was like, I've got those. But um but uh but yeah, so I just fell in love with Morley and Iron Guard again. And um I was on the verge of stripping one of the models. Um and everyone rallied to the defense of the model. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, I had everyone saying, you can't strip that. You can't, you can't do that because it's like too, it's like sentimental because it's like one of the early, uh, one of the very first models, like, you know, but it's like, well. Oh, it was one you'd painted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I misheard that. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is, this is. Um, we have spoken about this before. Yeah. But it's surprising to me that you wanted to strip it because you are one of the most like sentimental people that I know. Like it's from keeping stuff. I can't when remember when we spoke about it before what his take was. Being fair, I can't remember if you said. Well, no, 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 no. So I am, the, I am the painting, painting over old models and stuff like that. I think is the only time James actually goes against the grain. what I would expect him to on. on right, that. I see. Like, because so you would expect you are, him you are to not do quite it. a sentimental person. Yeah, you I like, am, yeah, you yeah, like yeah. keeping your like you know things you've had since you were a kid and, yeah. and things like that. So it does surprise me, yeah, that you would want to like not preserve the painting from from the time and, i think and i think it's because it's only one model of a range which i yeah it's only one model so so yeah i don't know yeah and then when other people when uh, when re and when other people said it i was just like well yeah I might, maybe i should just keep it and then i can unless, unless it's a particularly like hard model to no find, no it's not it's just it, a just but... a rank and file sergeant so so yeah, yeah. i feel like i'll be less nostalgic about stuff i painted recently well, I mean, obviously less nostalgic, but like I'd be less bothered about stripping it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm like thinking ahead. Yeah. So like, oh, this will be cool to have in 20 years. Do you know what I mean? I suppose so. But if there was something that I painted like even like a year ago, if I wasn't 
if it didn't mark anything significant, do you know what I mean? If it was just like yeah, a if you had model. some other stuff to to show for that time, because like where, at, at a certain point, I've got to draw a line between like what was like a test model and what's an actual like yeah, yeah. thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but it was just surprising that James wasn't on that side of it. Yeah, I, I think he would have like shelves full of anything that he'd ever painted, kind of thing. But, well, he has, but for other reasons. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very true. No, yeah. no, he's got shelves of stuff that he hasn't painted. Well, That's the yeah. opposite. Yeah. Yeah. We've, all, we've all got that. Yeah, you can't yeah. just... You can't just no, don't let me in with that. I do not have that. Yeah. I have, you, you will. You yeah, will. I do technically have shelves. Plural. Yeah, plural yeah. shelves. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two shelves. <laughs> two shelves. <laughs> technically plural. How are the town going? Uh, good. I'm enjoying painting them way more than I enjoyed building them. It could, it could almost sway. It's almost swaying me to like, oh, I could do some more of these. Like, because the, the painting them's what fun. A, what a complete Uno reverse. That yeah, is, painting yeah. them's fun. It's really fun. Like the, yeah, it's cool. It's a, similar to what I said about Orcs before. It's like you get a nice mix of stuff. They've got, because the, the, the Pathfinders are like pretty much half armor and half like cloth. Cloth, yeah. Mm. So it's nice that you don't get too bored yeah. on each one. But yeah, it's coming, coming along. You quite doing, well. And you're doing the thing where you paint one at a time right taking my own advice i'm doing one at a time i'm gonna try and make the last the next one better than the last each time see see where i get to yeah um, what would you say after being you started painting the first one pretty what, much done with the first one yeah. okay so what would you say after painting the first one is immediately coming out to you as like the biggest weakness of it or the thing you want to improve initially um there's stuff with the i mentioned before about the nightmare of the building and cleaning and uh -huh. how this this small some of the parts are and stuff like that and there's bits where like I've over cleaned and sort of um, where you like flatten it, smoothed over yeah, yeah. some details or some ridges and stuff that should be there. Mm -hmm. um, not to like a horrendous extent and definitely can be fixed with painting, like just painting some shadow in there like you wouldn't see. Sure. But like definitely something I'm going to be more aware of, I think, is like over cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, then... Also, I, I sprayed the armor color on because I was kind of in the Space Marine mindset. Of sprayed like, with airbrush or with a... Airbrush, yeah. So I airbrushed on the uh, the actual kind of orange... Oh, uh, yeah, like yeah. The, the armor color. Because I was like a, I was in that Space Marine mindset of like, oh, it's all armor, spray it on. and then But I sprayed it and then I spent probably more time sort of going back over all the other areas with black and basing them Because in, in terms of like surface area more of, it coverage, is not, like, more of it's yeah. probably not armor than is than is yeah um i would potentially probably actually just next on the next one i think i'm just going to airbrush the brown of the cloth um because that's kind of still quite dark and then I'll, I'll just won't even bother probably blacking out the rest of the stuff i'll just base on top of that so that saves some time so most of the stuff so far is just sort of process oriented yeah just getting my head around the process and also i think just each time everything's i've just got to be a bit tidier mm -hmm. that's the that's the thing it's like the first time i've uh, even actually yeah even going back down to the process thing i'm doing the edges working the recipes out because there's certain ones that i've kind of been trying to follow but even then i'm looking at them and i'm like oh they're too close together or i'm doing the second edge and i'm like oh you can't even see yeah like Partly that needs to be thinner and partly those two colours are too close together kind of thing. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's a lot of, it's more process stuff really. We've spoken that a little bit about like when there's, I said about steps that people would skip if they was doing like a big army project or stuff. Is stuff like that where you do like a highlight and you're like, I can barely notice it. So mm. most people would skip it, but then if you actually do it and you trust the process and you have that same attitude for everything mm. on a model, at the end of it, it will look better. Yeah. So. Yeah. Enjoyed it though so far. Yeah. yeah. I've been doing a, uh, a mix of odd jobs, hobby-wise. DIY? Uh, sorry? DIY? <laughs> so, ignoring that. <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> I've said for a long time I'm going to rebase my Black Templars that I've done for GD. Oh, yeah. I'm on base number four now, I think. And I can't make my mind up. I, I, I rebase them and I go, this is it. This is the one. I put them in back in the cabinet. Three weeks later, I go, no, don't like it. I'm starting again. So, I'm having a bit of a nightmare. I bought some Necromunda bases. Thinking like, oh, I'm going to go like industrial. I was thinking I might like learn quite a bit as well. Because I've said before on the podcast, I'm like normally just doing like really basic, like, you know, field terrain, whatever. I was like, I'm going to get some Necromunda bases. I really like them. I think they're cool. Like do some hazard stripes, a bit of weather and all that. Got them, painted them, really enjoyed painting them, put the models on them, hated how they look <laughs> together. So 
I've yeah. now got some mod, uh, some bases kicking around for like a future project. Yeah, done, like but Commander team. So back to square one. So I think I think you should just stick them on the original bases. Stick them on the original ones. Well, I didn't have them because they was originally they was on one big plinth. No, I mean as in the the, the first actual base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stick them on the original base and then move on to something else. That's the. Uh, take it from my take it from my yeah, book. That is a good take point. A, take a page from my Stop book. Stop worrying about. I it. had to leave it in the past. My 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 blood angel. One of my blood angel golden demon squads was always a bridesmaid and never the bride. Yeah. Okay. And I'd done loads of tweaks, left, right, and center, here and there on it. Blah blah. Just paint something new. I should. I, that's a lesson I should have learned a long time ago. Just is that just, a saying or is that a Jamesism? What? Bridesmaid, not the bride. No, no, that's the same. That's, that's, same. A, okay. that's a proper no, saying. No I mean, I'll take claim for don't it. Know if, I don't know if anyone's ever referred to it when talking about Golden Demon. So that part of it's a James. Fair play. But yeah, that yeah. is a, that is the same. Yeah, fair. Yeah. yeah, no, I do want to like wrap them up. I'm not like spending a lot of time like going in and repainting the models or anything. It was just like I really didn't like the composition of them on the original plinth they was on. And I've been trying to put them on something else. Are and you just... planning to re-enter them for something or are you just, yeah, hopefully, just yeah. for your own? No, I'd like to re-enter them. I also like... I'm really proud of the models and I really like the models and like kind of like we spoke about a minute ago, I wouldn't really want to go and like rehash them too much because I feel like they represent, like I got a pin for them as well. So like I feel like they represent like where I was at that time and I don't really want to change it too much. I just want to have them on bases, done. But here I am. Yeah. <laughs> Attempt number four. Just a quick one. I wanted to let you know that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world-class team here at Siege Studios. We offer a variety of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget, whether you want a centerpiece character or an entire gaming army. We offer well above the industry standard of quality and experience. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at siegestudios.co.uk. And just for you podcast listeners, you can get 5% off your first commission with us here at Siege using the code PAINT5. Now back to the show. Well, next up, to close out the year, as we are coming into the new year. We've been teasing this for a few months now, I think. It is, of course, the Warhammer calendar 2024. Oh. So this is what we spoke about, how in the spirit of like March from a crag, October, there's a couple of months of the year that like, I guess in the community, Instagram, that sort of thing, has become a bit of like a unwritten rule that it's, you know, a bit of a competition sort of thing, inspiration sort of thing. Yeah, it's Everyone just gets like involved. A, a focus for the month, isn't it? Yeah, and then James had the idea a few shows ago about how making this digestible and actually like achievable in the spirit of what we said about like setting goals and stuff for, for the new year. Doing this is just paint like a small little thing from that faction or maybe if you want to do a whole model, you can, but like just trying to dip your toe in to some degree. Yeah. Keep you on your toes, get you painting a variety of different stuff throughout the year. Uh, we've had loads of awesome suggestions from the listeners. There have been, come... there have been so many. Like, yeah. It's literally ridiculous. We were, so we were combing through all of them trying to pick some out. And yeah. I think just to say, because obviously a load of them were like suggested by multiple people as well. Um, I think we're going to try and, we'll, if, if it goes well, we'll try and do one the year after and we'll change it all. So if, yeah. if you've suggested stuff that isn't on there, then... There was loads of great ones, but unfortunately there's only one month of May, so we can only put so many <laughs> yeah, in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, and I think we've thrown a couple of our own in here as well. So uh, Yeah, and we tried to not double up on factions either. That was another reason why certain ones were picked over other ones. Yep. Uh, right, let's go through these then. January is now officially known as Beltanuary yep. for Eldar. Yep, so you can paint any Eldar. It doesn't have to be Beltan, but you can paint any Eldar. But if you want to paint Beltan, then, you know. Bonus points. Bonus points. Yep. Uh, that will be that. Uh, for February, we have a Feb Ear Spile. Yeah, uh, Chaos Marines. Any Chaos Marine. Uh, February was really hard. February was a difficult one. Like, <laughs> That's hard, yeah. Um, uh, the other option was Feb Brood Airy for Gene Seeder Cult, which is a better one. However, There's as I said, one. we tried to stick to one uh, one month per, or one army per month, or whatever. Only doing one, only doing a certain army once. Yep. Um, so Shadowing spoilers them. for later yeah. on. Uh, March is, of course... March from a crag. Yeah, that's the gold standard. That's the, the best one. Can't be changing that. Yeah, we're not yeah. going to change that. Uh, for April, we have a Procalypse. Mm -hmm. uh, add to your existing army. Yes, yeah, so it's a bit of a free, bit of a free, like, do, do what you like. Whatever army you normally paint in, add to it. The idea is, if you can build an Apocalypse level army in that month, then feel free. <laughs> Or I guess if you've uh, if you've got an army that's been on a bit of a back burner, that's like a month to give it a good, uh, good pushing on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would tag on, add to your existing army slash paint as many models as you can. Yeah. Or you have to paint an apocalypse unit, so it has to be a big thing. 
All that. Yeah. All that. Yeah. It's a bit of an open one. Because again, April, surprisingly <laughs> difficult. Uh, for May, we have May Canicus for Admech, of course. Fairly good one, that one. That's pretty yeah. good, yeah. Pretty solid. Slots in there well. Say no more. Uh, for June, we have June Steeler Cults. That'll be why February wasn't February Dairy. Yep. Uh, quite like that one. Be excited to get involved in that myself. Been uh, waiting to do a bit of GSC. Well, you've got to wait. You're not allowed to paint any until June. <laughs> there you go. I have to wait. Uh, for July, we have Julegion. Another <laughs> difficult one. <laughs> to, to, July, was, July was pretty tough. Uh, yeah. So, 30K. Yeah. So 30K or you can paint any 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 like Legion Imperialist stuff or, or stuff like that. That's yeah. the only way I think we could. Yeah. Could... 30K based. Anything 30K based, I think. Uh for August, we have Solar Org Zillia. Oh, God. I like that one, actually. That's pretty good. I like that one. That wasn't mine. I know I wrote it there, but that wasn't mine. I got that from a comment. There's a little um, parenthesis on this one. Basically, any human faction. Yeah. yeah, we thought it was probably a bit too niche to just say, just oh, let's all paint some Solar Auxilia. So we're going to go with any human from any game. That counts. Yeah. There we go. Uh, next up, we've got Tau September. I mean, that's classic. That's the, that's the best one that has been added so mm -hmm. that's up there with March from McCrag I think it's a pretty good one uh, a lot of these were listener comments as well we should have got, we should have probably got everyone's names it's been it was, difficult because they've come from so many places it was some hard to tell it was hard to tell who commented them first because so many people commented them as well um, so it was hard to go back through all the videos but if you did comment any of these leave us, leave us a comment in this one and we'll uh, say thank you uh, for October we of course have October another classic return yeah, yeah, couldn't change classic. that one yeah yeah, uh, for November we've got Nidvember. Solid. Yeah, for the moment that that one was put as a comment, that one was a keeper. Mm -hmm. There we go. And to round out the year, we've got the Sanguinala for December, which is apparently this Christmas solid equivalent. Christmas equivalent. Christmas in equivalent uh, in forty k. Yeah, something to do with. So December is pretty hard. To, oh, so to we are sorry, Sanguinala. We are doing as Blood Angels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Or, Blood Angels well, I, I wanted to. I wanted to put a bit of a sway in there. So like, obviously look, December was pretty hard to find one that had a good fit the mold. Fit the mold yeah. And, and, and look in the spirit of Christmas, it is the 40 K equivalent of Christmas essentially. Um, if you read the next column and go by that, but, um, but yeah, you could paint something blood angel, but I was going to say what you could also do is you have to just paint something red. So you could, you could, paint some red towel or paint some red guard tank or you could like the, I think yeah, we red can go with that I think seasonal. we'll, we'll stick it at Blood Angels but if you you know we'll let you off it's Christmas mm -hmm. so we'll let you off so just to uh, round this off there's no like rules for this basically this is just going to be a community challenge every single month for all of 2024 and uh, if you can use the hashtag paint perspective on Instagram you can share your whips with us chuck them in the discord as well and uh, I think what the plan is, is every month we're going to go through and have a look at some of these. We're all going to participate ourselves, hopefully, if we've got the time. Yeah. The the plan would be, hopefully, the last episode of every month, we'll uh, we'll have a look over it. and What we've yeah. done for that month, yeah. Yeah, yeah. looking yeah. forward to it. Should we do some listeners' comments? Go for it. Speaking of listeners, if you listen to the podcast every single week, like so many of you do, uh, we've noticed that 70.8% of you listen but aren't subscribed. So if you could just say a huge favor and hit that subscribe button, it helps us to bring you these shows for free every single week. Uh, let's do some of these comments here. Adiana Tube says, this time of year, I always revisit James Clear's Atomic Habits book. Highly recommend it for habit building and breaking. In general, and all the principles are great to apply for painting too. Make it obvious, make it attractive, make it satisfying, make it easy. Not the place for detail here, but all of these feed into process orientated instead of goal orientated. Uh, this approach has helped my general engagement and motivation with the hobby this year. Thanks, uh, podcast team. Highlight of my year on the media front. Merry Christmas all. Oh, very nice very comment. kind yeah I liked this actually because I, I um, actually started that book like a couple of weeks ago um, as an audio book it got kind of feeds into when I was talking before about the, the parallels between the gym and the uh, and painting is that that book um, I can see that um, let me just reread out those points so it was make it obvious make it attractive make it satisfying make it easy yeah so I can totally see how like the first thing that I think of when having that uh, when reading that is like your hobby set up and having it like accessible and approachable and like mm. easy to approach, like not putting obstacles up for yourself. I guess. Yeah. I mean, just to finish my point off before people think I'm saying that it's a fitness book, it's not, uh, <laughs> but it gets like passed around a lot in those circles. I think just because of, of building positive habits is such a big part of that really. Um, and it's, yeah, it's 
from what I've, you know, the initial first little bit that I've read is very good, and I, I've been recommended it multiple times. Um, I think it could be a good thing actually to go over like uh, books that have helped us yeah. with painting and stuff. Um, maybe, maybe even like some non mini related like podcasts. That's what I mean. Like yeah, that. like yeah. there's not there's not necessarily um, there's not necessarily a load of mini painting books that I've read. There's a few. Or, or even painting books in general, but um, plenty of things like that that have helped. I think. Yeah, yeah, Thanks and nice that. to nice to be someone's highlight of the year on the highlight of the year. I mean, that's a pretty yeah. prestigious award. That's, yeah, quite only a... around, for, only been around for six months, so that's <laughs> quite good. Uh, Iron Scholar says one suggestion I had in setting goals for next year is something I try to do every year. Instead of making a handful of giant New Year's resolutions, I will fail at. I try to set twelve goals, one for each month. Some of them carry through beyond the month, but it makes it easier to sustain momentum on smaller things. Uh, for January, I have a goal to paint at least once each week. And if I can make that stick, it will easily get me through my Tyranid army. And then I can try something else. Good yeah. plan. Good plan. Painting, uh, as we said last episode, trying to paint every day is, 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 is something that I'd probably recommend. But if you can paint every week at least once, that's, that's always a good start as well. So yeah. That almost like it. falls into the previous comment a little bit in terms of, making an accessible and easy goal to achieve kind of thing. Yeah. Making it easier for yourself to actually set those processes in place. I think I made that point on that show. Um, the idea of like setting New Year's resolutions, then you like accomplish it within the first couple of months. And it's like, what do you do for the rest of the year? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I like the idea of having like 12 goals. And such I guess as well, a, it's such a, a, a humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you with your like, when your glazing was too smooth or something the other the other week when you were like, oh yeah, it's just so smooth. I can't even see the trend. Like, I can't even see the contrast. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I set all these goals, but I just, I just keep doing them too quick. Like I keep, I keep setting these goals. I just keep achieving everything too fast. Like I don't know what to do. Do you get what I mean though? Because like with the New Year's resolutions, you either go one or two ways. You either like set such a ridiculous mountain to climb that you will fail at it and then you kick yourself. Me. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or it's going to be something that like, too small in scope do you know yeah, what I mean but if yeah. it's like 12 things I guess the punishment is pretty low if you fail at one of them because you've got another 11 shots at it right or equally like I guess a month gives you like a good amount of time to do something like worth achieving but not like yeah that is the whole thing of of don't you know that's why New Year's resolutions aren't really that's why, really, that's why I don't they don't really I don't, work I don't, like, I don't there's no there's no real benefit to them other than potentially kickstarting you to set short-term goals if it, if if it, for whatever reason you wait until now to set a short-term goal for january february but then you carry on doing that through the year then i suppose it's had a positive effect but yeah this yeah. point's a bit tangential but it kind of ties into what you said a second ago about like other podcasts unrelated to mini painting i heard someone say that when you tell someone your new year's resolution you get as much of a dopamine hit from telling a person as you do from actually accomplishing it. Yeah, so true. It makes it irrelevant doing it in the first place. So you've told everyone that you're like, oh yeah, this is money is resolution. And you've basically had the same output as if you'd even yeah, so done it. never bother doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people, I get the appeal of like wanting to tell people because you want someone to like keep you accountable. But yeah, no point, one cares either. Yeah. I'll just say that. Like no one really cares about a New Year's resolution of, of someone else. It's like, it's like telling someone a dream you had last night, but no one actually cares. Whereas we've, we've actually set in miniature painting goals and stuff in your friend group. I think everyone does care. Like everyone does care to keep them, keep each other accountable and things. Um, That's why I've like, never done them. Like I never, I've never done New Year's resolutions. Like don't say it, just do it. Yeah. Like I can't use the full colorful yeah. language that I normally use, but, <laughs> but, but, yeah, just just do it. Don't set don't set unreal expectations for yourself. Like you're just going to set yourself up for something to to fall down in your face. Like just just decide what you want to do. Go execute it. Go do it. Like don't talk about it. You're just blowing hot gas. You know. Um, yeah. One of the things my um, <laughs> one of the things of PT always says to me is where he'll like he'll like say something and I'll be like, oh yeah, I think like. I might be able to do this, 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 whatever. Or I think in the next week I want to do that. And it'll be like, don't think, just do. And that's kind of what James is getting Yoda. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't really have a reply to that. I don't have an you excuse. Can't, I suppose you can't, I've got to do it. You, you can't <laughs> argue with it. That's the thing. Like you can yeah. make all the, like, uh, like setting yourself these like expectations and stuff. And same with painting, with, like, with anything like, you know, all you're doing is kidding yourself. Like that's literally all you're doing. You're just kidding yourself. You're setting yourself a load of hurdles to jump over that you really can't be bothered to jump over in the first place. Like, and it's the same exactly for miniature painting. Like, you know, 
it, it, it's kind of like the, the representation of grey shame. And I, I'm I'm one of the worst for it, I suppose. But like, but like, you just got all these things and all these things that you say you want to do, or that, that you, and you just you just you're talking about it rather than doing it. Just, just literally, just do it. I know. Not sponsored. It could be the same. It could be the same. Not sponsored by Nike. Not sponsored by Nike. Yeah. Not sponsored by Nike. Yeah. I could. It could be the same. Of um. It's the, it's the similar conversation to like the army plans and stuff that we were saying. Yeah. Where we were like enjoying the plan and the and the setting up and stuff like that, and then not actually enjoying doing. That's what you said about your Necrons army, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. kind of the same thing because you wanted to have it, and you didn't yeah. want to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Yeah. Average Warhammer man says, I had a similar issue with loads of primed models and aiming to finish an army. I created a spinner with all the units uh, on it using a spinning wheel app and whatever it landed on, I painted. That's a great idea. Took away the issue of deciding what unit to start with and what to do next. Now using this method to go and finesse all my old and unfinished units. That's pretty good, isn't it? That's solid. That's really good. You love a spinner wheel. I love, well, a, spin I love a spinner wheel. Yeah. The amount of times we've had a conversation about something on this podcast and James has gone, what about a spinner wheel? <laughs> like yeah. he's trying to if if James had it his way on the on the wide right here, there'd be like a big wheel that we spin every yeah. single episode. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm still fighting that fight, guys. Yeah, right, they okay? could still so, be What will be the comment this week? <laughs> 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 it makes it more like a game show. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that's that is cool though. That's a very like that. cool idea and and productive. Yeah, it kind it's of quite novel it. as well, isn't it? Because then you've got like the excitement of like, well, I get to spin the wheel. Yeah, and yeah. it takes the choice away from you. And you you what was it? Don't just do. Just don't. It's just you don't that that the the, the right in right in the, uh, the sort of the plan for the new year or whatever. Like you're deciding on deciding on sort of like your goals for the new year. Like you just you, the wheel tells all. Yeah. You know? So yeah. yeah. Masterlink53 says, I got commission from Siege, uh, Alariel and Dreyker. Uh, looked so great that I felt compelled to finish my Sylvaneth for the new year. I did it. I finished it all 100 plus models, including nine terrain trees. Uh, but I completed it all at the end of January. Didn't know I was capable of doing it so fast. Should have set more goals. Well, there you go. There's a bit of a mix of, of points, points in there. Made, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, quite cool. That I've never really thought about... Um, people kind of receiving smaller commissions from us and it like spurs them on motivates them to paint but like that's amazing this whole time where we've spoken about the models that we get to see and that motivating us mm. well like all of those models, overlaps right? all of those models are going to someone yeah so it makes sense that they then motivate I mean, uh that person to paint as well i spoke about on like i think one of the first episodes of this podcast of when i came for my interview here at siege i saw some of the models that some of the senior team have been painted mm. and how incredible they were and like while i didn't commission them myself it gave me the same feeling so i can totally understand like where they're coming from with that now that they've said it i completely get it i've just never thought about that being the case when when the models reach the um reach the client i, I think it's because yeah. a lot of the stuff that we do tends to be armies for people so it's like full completion on stuff and and, and obviously we do like the odd character we do characters for people as well but um the fact that someone's got some characters from us and then gone i want to add more to this and do an army that's an amazing thing so that's yeah. awesome i think that's maybe it is that like i tend to think if they get an army from us they're obviously an army type of person they want a game if they get characters from us i think more often than not i tend to think oh they must just want some display models they must not have yeah but then maybe there's way more crossover than, than we think i was actually quite surprised starting in how many characters are done mm. like it's pretty significant like chunk of the jobs are just characters on their own so that totally makes sense yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got a new review in on iTunes. Uh, thank you everyone for submitting your reviews over on there. If you are listening on the audio platforms or even if you're listening on YouTube, uh, it really, really helps out if you could head over to iTunes or Spotify or one of those audio platforms and leave us a review or a rating. Much appreciated. Chris Jones says, excellent podcast, great banter, and it's always a highlight of my week. Each episode has interesting topics and the guys are brilliant. So thanks, Chris Jones. You're brilliant. Yeah, honestly, I could be writing these myself. It sounds like, <laughs> it sounds like I'm like, I'm just, I've got burner accounts. It's like the most perfect reviews. Joe, every don't week. tell them. Anyone who thought that, <laughs> oh, I can't be bothered to do that. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who thought that was original now thinks that you have loads of burner accounts. Yeah, so, so no. yeah. Well, yeah. The, the perfect reviews we're getting, getting that absolute, like, yeah, couldn't, couldn't write better myself. Topic for this week, as it is coming to the end of the year, we thought it would be fun to have a bit of a reminisce on the show. But rather than just going back and picking our like favorite moments from the show, we wanted to sort of talk about the things that have actually had the biggest impact on us personally from the conversations we've had. Because while we do record these podcasts as like a show, these are like real discussions that we're having, if you get what I mean. And we have said many times, you know, off air, like, oh, I, I really picked up on what you said on the show the other day. And I yeah, started doing yeah. that. So uh, we sort of each came up with one. And we've also asked all of the listeners to uh, submit theirs as well. So we're going to go through a bit of a mix. 
Uh, Joe, do you want to kick us off with one of yours? Um, one of my biggest light bulb moments would have been when you, I think it was the episode that James wasn't here and I was halfway through painting that space marine and I'd had an absolute nightmare. And I, it was the point where I just wouldn't go normally go back to it or something. And we were sitting down and talking. Um, it was the episode where we decided to uh, hate on nostalgia. Oh, yeah, the James well. wasn't here. <laughs> um, um, James will be pleased to know one of our worst performing episodes, I'll be honest. <laughs> Turns out people really like 90s Warhammer. Yeah, they yeah. love 90s Warhammer. They prefer the episodes with James on. I'm just going to um, say amen. <laughs> um, um, so, but we, during that, that was where we first fully kind of discussed between us in in like the intro was the the kind of trust the process and you've got to just, you know, take a step back, get to it, da, da, da. And I think just having the trust the process thing in my mind, um, even when doing this kill team at the moment, um, there's been multiple times where I would have gotten stressed out and stopped. Capitulated. Um, yeah. Given up. yeah. Uh, but trusting the process and just, I, I, I've started to think of it in a way of like, whatever I'm not happy with, it's done now. So I might as well see what it looks like if I try and finish it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's already happened. So trust the process probably look better at the end anyway. Um, yeah, that was a pretty big one for me, I think. I think that's part of why some people like painting parts of a model to completion because you've kind of got this reference point of where you're going. Whereas if you're painting like a model collectively as a whole in the like sort of batching process, like we talk about a lot, this wouldn't really like apply to squads necessarily, but like hear me out if it's like say a character or something like especially you're painting or you're just trying to paint as best as you can. When you're doing that, it can be hard to see like the end of the tunnel and you don't actually know how it's going to turn out because if you say you're going to do like four highlight stages on a piece of armor and you've only done two, you don't really have a reference point of where it's going. But that's why a lot of display painters, I think, will say like, I'm going to paint this little bit of leg fully to completion and then I'm going to work up to his thigh and then his other leg. It's, so they can I mean? see what the completed thing is going to look yeah, like. Yeah, and then the model is kind of never in that state of not looking good. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you're like, oh, it just looks unfinished. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't look bad, it just looks unfinished. Yeah, you have a factual thing to say, it is going to look good if I carry on. Yeah, but yeah. I think from doing that a lot, you do have more, you do trust the process naturally from doing it a lot of times, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if I, you know, if you've painted even the same scheme before or something like that, you know what direction it's going to go, don't you? So. Yeah, and if you're doing an army and it's like a recipe that you're familiar with, it doesn't really matter what state like your 20th squad that you're doing is if you've got like a whole bunch that are finished, like yeah. you know how they're going to look at the end. You shouldn't, you shouldn't really need to trust the process too much if you're experimenting, but if you are doing something where it's either for an addition for an army or starting a new project or whatever, I think putting stuff in that helps that process to be as smooth as possible will always benefit you. Um, which leads me conveniently on to sort of like one of the things which I, I, I always bang on about and anyone who watches us knows I always go on about. But like a painting journal for me is the thing that I, I honestly use it all the time. It's something that's really important and part of my painting process because it allows me to just document all the things that are going to make make that process as best as possible. But also as well, um, you know, just, just make sure that I am hitting the, the milestones that I want to through the project and making the right choices for it as I go through it. Um, it, it's been invaluable for me since the moment I started using it many years ago. And and I, I honestly say that, that once you start using one, you, it's really difficult to not use one because you feel like you're throwing caution to the wind all the time if you don't. Um, and yeah, like I said, it, for me, a painting journal has been the thing that I'd always I'd always go on about and always advocate to people to, to, to invest in getting one and using one and, and making it part of your process and part of, of, of that flow of work that you ac actually do. Um, so yeah. I think that's definitely one that, listeners have picked up on as well yeah spinach dip miniatures says uh painting journal i have a few projects on the go at once and this helps a lot so yeah i, I feel like i see a, f a few comments every time we mention it. it's been a couple of episodes we spoke about it and always there's a couple of comments of people saying oh, i didn't think of that or asking to specifically where to buy like what, what one james uses or whatever like yeah we a lot of people asking us for like recommendations but I can, yeah. I can sort out a link it's not a problem i can sort out a link for people if they need it but yeah yeah um what about you george was there like one that stuck out to you particularly it was more of like a conversation we had rather than like a specific point but sometimes when we're doing these episodes i won't really realize how i feel about something until i have like a dedicated conversation about it in this sense because i don't really i don't really talk shop like this kind of anywhere else in my day-to-day -day, if you get what i mean like this is sort of my own weekly roundup to kind of collate my feelings and opinions on things and i like the sort of back and forth of these conversations so i kind of came to my own conclusion when I was speaking about um, 
what we've spoken about in a couple of episodes about like why you do the hobby and like how you get an enjoyment out of it. And that was when I came full circle on the idea of like, when I sit down to paint, I need to stop saying to myself, like, here's where this model needs to be at the end of this session and just start saying to myself, I've got an hour to paint. I'm going to paint and actually like enjoying that time because I'm one of those people who's sort of always in a bit of a chase, like in my day to day, I'm always sort of like looking ahead and I, sometimes I do kind of stop to enjoy it, if you get what I mean. And like the whole point of a hobby is to have fun and enjoy it. Yeah. So I don't know why I'm always kind of like just chasing the end result when I love painting. and I love spending my time doing painting. But for some reason, when I sit down to paint, I'm like, feel like I'm in a rush. Not like physically, like I'm painting faster than I can. But I mean, like in my head, I mean, like a mental rush to get it done and like to go on to the next model. And then once I've done that, I can go on to the next thing. Yeah, I think it's a tricky part of any hobby that can be turned into a job. Mm. There's two different mindsets then, isn't there? There's like the thought process of doing it as a hobby and the thought process of doing it as a job yeah. and what how you're spending your time is completely different on both of those because if you're doing it as a job then you do want to get through it quickly and you might not necessarily be enjoying it and so on so i think even if you're not doing it as a job there's still um there's still an option of that mindset to creep in if that makes yeah. sense i think even excluding it as a job because people because it's kind of an army thing and like miniatures are kind of like done and then they're done in a way. You know what I mean? Like there's not many other mediums where like you're doing the hobby and then it has like an end point. You've got to like go out and get like new Move stuff to and kind of like one. start again from scratch. That's what, that's why I always say like it's better to do everything for the army in one fell swoop because then the reset point when you finish that part of it isn't as far back as it, it can be if you do everything at the same point. So like for example, you do all the building, you do all the undercoating, you do all the base coating. If everything's at a base coat stage, your reset point is closer to finish than starting from building again. I just feel like a lot of people, including myself, like when you have an army in front of you, you just think about like getting it done rather than like, I'm going to really enjoy this 300 hours I've got ahead of me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I no, think when I you, if you look at the amount of hours you're going to invest into it, I think if you look at it and try and count, then I think that's, a, that's, that's not the mindset and the approach to have in my mind. Like, I think, I think. No, that's not my point. My point was that you should enjoy that time rather than just like no, looking no, ahead I, to the I end goal. That. You should be yeah. like, this is a, this project I've got in front of me is so great because now I can spend like as many evenings as it takes or afternoons or weekends doing what I love doing, sitting down with the brushes and painting. And I know not everyone actually loves the painting, but that is the hobby for me. And I know I love the painting, but for some reason I've not been in the past actually enjoying that. I'm like retrospectively enjoying it rather than enjoying it in the moment. Mm. I like to look back on it and be like, oh, I really enjoyed painting that character. But when I was painting the character, all I was doing was thinking about, all I was thinking about was finishing it yeah. rather than enjoying okay. it. That kind of opens up a whole other can of worms on, you know, enjoying something in hindsight and and anything like that. That's that's a life problem. Yeah, that's I think it's just, just a painting problem. I think it's just one of those things that since I said it and it was only a few shows ago, it's just immediately changed how I feel about painting entirely. Mm. Like since then, it's literally like a light bulb was like or like a light yeah. switch. Like all of a sudden, when I sit down to paint now, I'm in such a clear headspace and I actually like I'm just enjoying the time. Kind of had a knock-on effect with me as well because one of my other big takeaways was the um viewing painting as relaxation mm. which is kind of yeah. a similar thing where like yeah. actually just okay i've got an hour of just calm just enjoying painting and that was a big that's that is viewing it like that is why i've managed to paint actually for the last week or so like because i've been end of the day like that's my wind down now that's my okay, I'm going to chill out before bed. I'm going to get an hour of painting in. Um, and just to having that switch on how you view it has, has had a positive impact on me, definitely, which kind of falls under the same thing. Yeah. Similar, similar, similar conversation. conversation. Yeah. I still think one of the best things is, is uh, assessing the, what you're going to try and get done within the time frame before you start. So when you sit down, go, right, what, am I, what is my objective or what am I trying to do in this session? And again, valuing that time. Is it an hour? Is it three hours? Is it... 30 minutes is it whatever i think that's one of the personally one of the best tips that i think i could give some um purely because it means that you're being a bit more strategic with the time that you're actually invested into painting it means that what you 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 won't get to the end of a session and think that you haven't achieved something if at the beginning you set it with i'm going to do this this session whether it's clean the brushes take the crap out the lids on the paint pots uh plan the next project in the painting journal for half hour base coat this model base coat this do this like i think that's i think that's that combined with the planning of in you know, a journal, like assessing your time investment for the session, that's 
in my mind, one of the most important things because we've all been there where we've sat down for an hour and gone, right, well, uh, you know, I didn't get much done in that time, in that session or I, you know, I wanted to get this done, but I've, I've not achieved it. You know, I think if at first instance you decide upon what you're actually trying to get done in that time that you've got, you won't get to the end of it and feel that you've, you've wasted it or you won't feel that you've not achieved the thing that you set out to do because you'd have something a bit more sectioned for that time that you've actually can invest into it. Um, I think that's probably one of the best things along with the journal that I'd probably recommend to people. Yeah. I think being realistic about those things is like going to have such a positive effect, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Like not being too hard on yourself and not doing too much in that half hour that you've got or, or whatever. Yeah. I guess it's important to assess kind of before you sit down of for this painting session, am I looking to just enjoy myself or I'm actually looking to get stuff done. Cause if you need to be productive and you actually have got stuff to do, you kind of do need to hit it a bit differently. Like if you are just painting for enjoyment, like more power to you. But if you are doing that every single evening aimlessly, you probably will be slower to get stuff done. So if you do want to have it done for like a game in a few months or whatever, then I guess fair enough. But yeah, I guess it just shows how different people think about it in different ways. Really, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Big news, tickets are now on sale for the Siege Studios painting classes for 2024. For over eight years, we've been running in-depth, hands-on classes across the UK, which has allowed us to create the perfect learning environment for improving your painting skills. With a variety of topics available, all our courses are taught by senior artists and feature practical demonstrations in a relaxed environment that welcomes interaction from you, discussions on theory, and an open Q&A session so you can ask that burning question you've had on your mind. You can even bring your models for feedback. To book now and reserve your place before tickets set out, head over to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. I'll see you on a class scene. Joe, have you got one more point for us, I think? Yeah, I think potentially not even directly like a painting tip or anything, but having the Lutin episode and getting to talk to Lutin about the law and, and stuff like that and just connect all of us kind of connecting that to the benefits of like, the benefits that that can bring to painting. Um, I've never been one that's like, super knowledgeable about the law or super interested in in like the really deep stuff of the law obviously i know the stories and there's tons of stories in there that i'm interested in and stuff like that but i think connecting it as a point that james has always touched on is how much that can benefit painting 100 percent, and just that knowledge of the knowledge of the thing that you're actually painting how much that can benefit your work um and yeah i think getting to sit down with Lutin and Obviously, you know, probably my favorite episode that we've done because just because of that's such a <laughs> mad thing to get to do. Um, but just, yeah, to have that full on conversation about law and kind of get to pick someone's brains about like the different things like that. Someone who is really knowledgeable about it and kind of connecting the dots as to how that can benefit painting. I think that was, that's probably something that a lot of people haven't done. Yeah, Jeez, it's funny speaking sense. to someone who was from one of those other pillars because like we speak to painters a lot and you like tap into all of their knowledge but hearing about something that's like related to what you do in the painting but not not from the not we always talk about the, the, the gaming view. pillar the yeah, law yeah. pillar and the, and the, painting and the same thing like when we spoke to boxing he has like all this stuff about the game that I yeah. have no idea about it's interesting like being on the other side of that do you know what I mean yeah, I, I think you, you, you've got to look at that side of it as in like the, the thing I loved about it as much as it just reinforces m for me the importance of how important the law and narrative is to the miniatures. Um, like I understand that, you know, that you can paint the models whatever colors you like. You can do whatever insignia you want on them. You can do, you know, whatever world you want them on, whatever, blah, blah. But I think that because it has such a weight of depth to, to why we all fall in love with these things, I, I think. I've always said it, I think it's a little bit of a disservice like that you put so much time and thought into the painting and how you actually approach and doing it. But like these little things which give weight to that miniature or weight to that narrative that you're trying to paint that model within or whatever, not putting them on the model for me, it's like it takes seconds to just go on Lexicanum and read something. It takes seconds to pick up an old codex and look at some artwork. It takes seconds to look some to search, Google search artwork of like a campaign or something or find out like that, that, Again, it's that investment of time. Those couple of minutes that you do that that research can totally shift and change the way that you approach painting the miniatures and add so much more tangible depth to the models. Um, so having him on and kind of like showing his passion for for the for the law and narrative that he has got, it, it 
he's as passionate about the law and narratives as we are as painting but the beauty of it is that they blend together really well and they and it's it's almost like colors that harmonize they like they, they, they those two things harmonize so well so to not approach painting without it you know or to approach painting without it for me it, it, it it's just a shame in my opinion i think i think it's something that you, you that for the sake of a bit of, of research it can add so much weight to your, to your miniatures um i think even to touch on you saying like, oh, you can paint your own colors and stuff like that. In doing that, you're kind of inherently creating your own law. Yeah. So law still becomes important to that model. Well, exactly. Like you're you're creating your thing. That's still law. That's your you know your law. I'll, um, I'll, I'll tell you this now. And sorry to segue, but I'll tell you this now. So I'm reading the Mordian Nine Guard novel at the minute. Okay. And as sad as this sounds, I'm writing down every single name out of the book. I'm writing down like worlds they've been on so if i want to write on scrolls on tanks i like you know um if there's a character that's got a specific like injury like a bionic leg or bionic arm or something like that then i'll try and maybe put one in the unit that's got that so that you know that i i always try and tailor the the the, the, the army to, to to the force or to the thing and i think that if when you if we all like listening to you know listening to science fiction we're all into science fiction from doing this so like adding that on adds adds loads um but yeah, like like you were saying, I think it's just it's just it was a really good episode, and I think for me it's been one of my favourite this year because it's I've known Luton a long time and we've got to work with him obviously doing stuff for him, but at the same time having someone on that has an exterior passion to painting that's just as tangible for us as an episode I think was really good. So yeah. just on your point as well, it's something that I didn't really appreciate for the longest time because when I first got into the hobby, only until recently did I even like touch the law like it was not interested and for the longest time i didn't understand why people would get like frustrated with like new miniatures if they like didn't match something or sometimes i don't still don't really agree with this but sometimes you see people like uh, they'll comment on other people's posts like oh you painted this like the wrong color or whatever and i didn't really understand that for the longest time but now i'm starting to appreciate the law a bit more i do kind of get where they're coming from and when i draw it to like other universes like i'm a massive star wars fan and i think like well if a star wars model came out and it like had the wrong like you know, if there was like a wrong phase, color lightsaber, yeah, if there was like it. a phase two clone troop and it had like the wrong markings on it, then I'd be like annoyed. I mean, yeah. like, it bottoms out. At, can you imagine Mace Windu without a purple lightsaber? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. The answer's no. Like you know, he would you know, um, and it'd have some abbreviated text on the hilt as well. But like, but the, the thing is, is like that's how important it is in my mind. So so I, I I just I would always advocate people if you if you're diving deep into miniatures and you fall in love with a miniature range read a book of it or read the lexicanum or read something just to just to add a little flavor and nuance from that because it it directs someone will look at it at an event or if you go down a local hobby shop and go oh wow you've written chthonia on that scroll of the sons of horus model to show that he's probably a veteran that's come from Cth- i mean like there's loads of little things you can do which just add that real depth to the miniatures on top of the incredible detail and models that they are like you know um it's just yeah it just seems a bit of a shame sometimes in my mind uh, let's do some of the listener suggestions for this. Uh, we put a little bit of a message out on both our Instagram at Siege Studios and on our Siege Studios Discord. Uh, if you want to become a member of the Discord, check out the description of uh, the video here on YouTube and you'll find a link there and you can chat to members of the Siege community about all things painting, hobby related and uh, submit your suggestions for the podcast as well. Morris Lab says, one of the most useful tips was using a small amount of super glue to attach a model to its base while you add the basing materials and then breaking it off the bases and painting the model and base separately. I would be interested in hearing the team's thoughts on how to make this as effective as possible when magnetizing bases. Would you use liquid mask to cover the contact points if priming the base and model in different colors? So just so I understand this, uh, and I want to make sure I just, I'm going to answer both sides of the fence because I've, I've kind of interpreted it in two different ways. Um, first one being for magnetizing bases, if you're magnetizing them so that you can transport them and they stick to like a metal sheet in a tray or something like that, then I don't really paint any, have any paint on the underside of the base because you want the magnet and any glue that you use to have direct contact. I wouldn't put like a film of paint over that surface and then stick a, stick the magnet to it. So I'd always directly, directly stick the magnet to the plastic if I was doing that. Um, regarding uh, magnetizing two bases, I, I've not really personally done that, like as in magnetizing the models to the specific bases and then so they take you can take them off the bases. But um, yeah, I think the best thing to do would be to to put the models onto the bases, either score around them or put basing material around and then on the undersides, stick a magnet on the underside and then a magnet goes in the foot personally. Um, if you 
the other thing you can do is you can put basic material on the, on the whole entire base and just place the model onto it and wiggle it or move it a bit so it, it sort of disturbs the basic material so it's nice and flat and smooth. Then that way you can still stick the magnets on the underside of the base, have the magnets sunk or drilled into the bottom of the feet, and you can still effectively place the model on a flat bit of terrain on the base. Um, yeah, I, that's probably the two approaches that I would have for doing it personally. Um just to give you kind of like either option. I, I didn't really know which way to interpret that. Yeah, question. it's a weird so, one that magnetizing to the bases, isn't it? Because it doesn't happen that much. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Some people do that for transport as well. Just yeah, to yeah. break things down, I suppose. Regardless, so the tip in there, uh, the uh, using super glue to attach models so you can break them off. I mm -hmm. quite like using super glue a lot with plastic models because it's not permanent. It's not strong, but I use that to my advantage rather than making a permanent connection. I love, like uh, we chatted about this before, doing not doing a sub assembly doing like a future tense sub assembly yeah yeah so attach like an arm with a tiny little dot of super glue so that you can prime the model as one and then break base it the model as one and yeah. then later if you need to get in there just snap it off yeah yeah uh requiem wraith says i've picked up a few good things from the podcasts uh first of all refreshes are s tier despite no one remembering when they last had a pack <laughs> base rims should always be purple paint a model in the smallest sub assembly feasible down to the individual parts directly off the sprue uh, but really, that my compressor had a bolt in the bottom of it that I should have been removing when not in use. And the airbrush cleaner should be diluted and to always try and do my edge highlights thinner. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm instructions unclear on the first few of those. Yeah. But... I'm, I'm, I'm with him on, I'm with him on the, 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 the diluting of the airbrush thinner and cleaner. I, I, yeah. Up until that time when you were over mine, George, I didn't even realize obviously. I didn't yeah. either. Yeah. I still use it neat. I don't care. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um, uh, the uh, the bolt on the on the bottom of the compressor, hundred percent. You have got to do that. That's that's really important to look after the compressor. Um, I'm not really going to mention the or trigger anybody with regards to the base rims. Um, you you and Sa you and Samuel Jackson love a certain color. That's perfectly fine. Um, I don't know how we thought we'd get through the final like roundup episode without mentioning the base rims. But uh, no, no, you know, no, you don't have to. That's it. We'll just leave it at that. I thought just well, slip we'll it in there now. Yeah, yeah there's, been a bit, uh, there's yeah. been a bit more talk about it on YouTube as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you know, you know. Uh, I've got a few like more rapid fire ones here. So these are from Instagram. This was just like a little, uh, just a little quick caption that people could reply to. So these are just some more concise points rather than some full comments. Yeah. Uh, John Kata LBU says, uh, learning brush control and brush pressure. That's one of the yeah. big... Uh, that's, a, that's one of the pillars of James's uh, teachings really, isn't yeah. it? That's the strong one. Big one that he's uh, always on about. I picture it like uh, Mr. Miyagi. James has just got there. People, no, but you, you're not allowed to paint. You're not allowed to brush. You're just sitting there with plastic card in your bare hands. Just yeah, going. yeah. Doing brush control. <laughs> yeah. Plastic card and a toothpick. Yeah, and you're yeah, just. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we don't have to go to a toothpick. I mean, I, we can, we can, we can use a brush. It's fine. A toothbrush. A toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a different one of his teaching. Electric one. Oh yeah. God, I forgot about that. Electric one. Uh, Pallet Town Hobby says uh, warming spray cans and models in the airing cupboard. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good um, hack that I still one, don't it? have an airing cupboard, so I'll just use a hot water or warm water. But yep. um, yeah, forty uh, first millennium. Dave says uh, upside down Tupperware box for a homemade wet palette and use the lid. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a throwback. That was one you found out through us. I think blew my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a good one. Who'd, that's an old, old one. Who'd have thought? Yeah. I bet he's a fan of TK Max Tupperware now. <laughs> I can't like whenever I walk past a TK Maxx, I get like triggered now. Oh, I get people yeah. sending me photos in DMs of TK Maxx Tupperware a while. Okay, so, that, <laughs> so 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 thank thank yourself, lucky. All right, okay. You've really got to think about what you do for a living when people are <laughs> unsolicited sending you photos <laughs> yeah. of TK Maxx Tupperware. Yeah. Uh, Rogue four hundred four says pushing your boundaries and giving those big intimidating models a go. Yeah, mm. yeah, we spoke briefly on that. I I don't know when I'll do that next. To be honest. But uh, yeah, it's definitely one worth trying to do, isn't it? Like trying to tackle those huge models. They look cooler at the end as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, one of the most hesitant things for that for me is it's not necessarily the size or importance or amount of detail on a model that will make me apprehensive about it. It's if those surfaces and textures are things that I'm familiar with and confident in. Yeah, I get that. I understand. So if it's like a massive Tyranid model, I'm way out of my depth. But if you gave me like a, a massive marine. marine equivalent, it wouldn't bother me. Or even like 
some, some other more imperial stuff or even some orc stuff. But like the second it's something like kind of dipped out of comfort zone in terms of like how you're, what you're actually going to do with the paint when you put it on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everything else is just a toy says, let the people magnify. Throw that oh, one in there for you, yeah. Joe. Yeah. yeah. Big one. I'm Hashtag glad that, let the people magnify. Glad that resonated when I took a stand against all you snobs. Um, I have accepted that I'm going to need to buy some magnifiers, I think. I think we all, yeah. look, we all accept that, you know, age catch, catches up with us very quickly. It's not just age. It's, it's just, just you get age. to a point where if you want to push your painting as far as possible, you do get to a point where like physics start fighting you. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you want to do really high end detail on very, very small parts, the higher you push that detail and the smaller those parts get, just, the more physically impossible it is to do. It just seems silly to me to not use a tool that's there. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a tool there to, to help you. It seems stupid not my, to use my it. Biggest, my biggest fear with it, as, as I said when we had that chat, was like that my eyes get used to it or I get used to it. It's the same thing with glasses for me. Like, I've always been able to paint miniatures super close and look at them as they are, obviously, just with the naked eye. So my worry is in using them that my eyes get used to them for close, super close stuff. So then when I take them off, it's like, you know, and I, I know I've heard... And then people, you won't be short-sighted or long-sighted. I know. Then, then you'll, I, be, you'll be, I'll be no super, sighted. I'll be super short-sighted, yeah. <laughs> the like, irony I find in this is you'll ask me to take photos of your model so you can see them bigger and see where the mistakes are. Yeah, but that's because I can't use but a DSLR you, to save my life. But like, you could just so, put on the magnifiers and it would solve your problem. No, yeah. I'm, no magnifiers. I, I don't, I'm, I've got this thing where it's like, you know, I until my eyes go, I want to use them as naturally as possible, I think. Um, and then at that point, I'll then... I don't know if it necessarily, like... It's, it's not like, necessarily because you struggle to see them. It, even no, my point is more like if you're talking about checking details and stuff, putting them on for like two minutes to look at something, then taking them off, your eyes aren't going to go right. I'm no, that's packing up now. That's no, no, if we've got that, I'm just going <laughs> to use that. No, that's that's fair. No, but I, I just I I said my biggest concern is my eyes getting used to them if I'm using them for a prolonged period of time, and also because look, when I when I paint, I try and focus as much as physically possible. I know what will happen. I'll put them on to check something for two minutes. And knowing me, I'll go, wow, this is amazing. I can see super detailed. They'll stay on and then that's it. I'm, I'm on the slippery slope to permanent use. Then you'll you know? start painting yeah. stuff you can't even see <laughs> when you take them off. Exactly. You sit there like so, trying to finesse like a rivet. Yeah. So, yeah. so can't even see it. For me, and, I, and I've had it before where people said, oh, that's not how our eyes work and all of that. And I get that totally. I'm, I'm sure that's probably 100% correct. But but like, I, I just, there's this thing where I'm like, until I know that I need to use them, I like, I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to stay with my eyes and then, and then just blow the pictures up really big. Um, and get assistance to do that, so I can see, <laughs> I can see what I need to fix. Yeah, well, think, I'm glad that one stuck with with people. Yeah, I think that is what sealed the deal for me was the pictures thing because I do take photos of my models and I find mistakes. I'm like, I need to sort this out. Yeah, I need to sort this out. Uh, what have we got next? Uh, Turpy Paint says posture, bracing of elbows and hands. Yeah, that's super important. Yeah. Think, was that when we spoke about like getting a decent chair and like not killing yeah. your back and sitting like a goblin? Yeah, that yeah. was ones where I think we wanted to talk about like some more almost underrated tips. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like it was ones that you don't necessarily think of or weren't directly to do with painting and stuff like that, but do definitely benefit you. And we had so many comments about the the light thing. Yeah. The light was the biggest one. People saying like putting the light higher up and even you said about just like putting it on a book even if you don't want to buy a new lamp or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Or uh, and what I did say was I, when you, because you're using the lid of the wet palette as your <laughs> palette, uh, the lid of the Tupperware is your wet palette. You can use the actual Tupperware to put your light on. Two and one Tupperware light. lid slash yeah. lamp. So you would need a device. strong Tupperware, which is probably a TK Maxx job. To be honest. I said, yeah. yeah, I'm just imagining you with like a comedically large, like ten gallon container. <laughs> it's not that. Big. <laughs> it's not that. Big. Uh, Kyle Renwick says shot glasses as mini holders. Yeah, it's the best one. I've kind of a classic. Kind of transferred over to that now. Um, now that I've got the Stronger ones that I'm not going to snap in my hands. Um, <laughs> is that you trying to flex that you go to the gym now? You're like, yeah, well, I'll just pick up these well, shot no, glasses and before, they just explode this, in my this hands. This is way before I went to the gym. It's just every time I was trying to use shot glasses that I'd got off Amazon or whatever, they were just snapping like every time I was trying to hold the models. But then James recommended some uh, specific ones and they're, they're a little bit stronger. Um, yeah, they're doing the job. Very good. There you go. Uh, Krypton Row says, uh, to actually go ahead and buy a small box and to try out Techniques on each mini. Yeah. So that ties good. into what you said in the little preamble here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, cool. really well. it's a very good one. I'd be interested to see people's results with that as well. Yeah. Um, if anyone wants to tag us in their posts, that'd be cool. I think that's something that I 
do but i haven't done specifically in the sense of like buying a box of Almost models like conscious though, dedicated yeah. yeah um i'd like to give that a go i think so i think it's a good idea fun little exercise if you're enjoying the show and you want to get even more painting tips and techniques from us here at siege head over to our patreon with the siege studios patreon you'll gain access to a catalog of over 250 pdf and video tutorials covering a variety of techniques from our foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses and much more. We also have a tier just for you podcast listeners to help support the show. So if you want to take your paintings to the next step and make the most of your hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash Siege Studios. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on the show, please leave it in the comments down below on YouTube or if you're listening on any audio platforms, fire us a DM on Instagram at Siege Studios. Uh, this one comes from Tucker Coolman. 5390. Uh, video number two of asking you guys who are your favorite Primarchs? Yeah, I did see this first comment as well. Um, I thought we'd get to it eventually, but. Um, <laughs> I almost wanted to like leave it. <laughs> see, see, see how far he'd go, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't even need to answer this one, do I, surely? I think, yeah, let's get James's answer done because I know everyone's burning to know what this answer is. Who's only, your favorite Primark? The James? only one that has wings. <laughs> No, uh, doesn't uh Falgrim, got it. Doesn't uh, yeah. Falgrim doesn't have wings. Uh, have you seen his full job model? Um uh, not demonic form. <laughs> yeah. No, um it's, if, it's, if it's if it's it's not yeah, but are we talking 30k or are we talking 40k? Well because that makes well, a lot of difference. It just says Primark. It's starting to fall apart this, James. It just says Primark. It just says Primark. It doesn't say in their original human form. Who's your it? favorite 40k Primark that's alive? 40k Primark that's alive. I'm oh, that's great. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go Gulliman. Back him in the recorder. I'm gonna go Gulliman. Gulliman. <laughs> I'm gonna go Gulliman. All right, but yeah. but in general, favorite. It's Primark obvious. Is surely, come on. Yeah. Like anyone who's been, if you've not if you've been watching this podcast and take anything away from it, then surely without even saying a word, the artwork that's on the walls and the amount I go on about it yeah. gives it away. If you're the new man, here, James likes blood angels <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, the man bullied us into doing the. Same Sanguinala as the December. I did uh, not. I, there was no name applicable, so I saved the team. Yeah, um, no. save the team. So, Practice into a corner. <laughs> <laughs> Very different things. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I obviously like Sanguinius. Is my favourite. He said yeah. we weren't allowed to go to the Christmas dinner if we didn't do Sanguinala. He, he told me. He to told be... me that we'd have to come, but we wouldn't be allowed food. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true at all in the slightest. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, it's it's it is Sanguinius. Obviously, um, yeah, my favourite. Always has been. Always will be. Um, yeah. But I, but if if I had to pick one that wasn't obviously the second, one, second, second, favorite. I'm gonna probably go for uh, Ferris Manus. Yeah, I'm gonna go Ferris Manus. I, I think it's a real shame that uh, the betrayal we had to go through. Um, and uh, I just think as a character, it's really, really, he's very interesting, like the Smith kind of like character, uh, in the sense of the way that he used to forge, he forge weapons for other Primarchs and and those like, as gifts and things. So I think it's awesome. Um, and his downfall is a bit sad, really, as well. Like mm. killed by nice, nice bloke, killed by a weapon that he made. <laughs> yeah, nice bloke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The one thing, I, the one thing I am really gutted on actually, and it's for anyone that has read the um, has read the, the the heresy novels on the artwork of um, I think it's Fulgrim uh, on the artwork of Fulgrim. He's fighting uh, Fulgrim, and I'm really gutted that the, the official model didn't come with a ginormous wrench spanner that um that the artwork has got um but yeah like uh yeah first man is definitely really interesting character um but i think i think he adds a lot of flavor to it to a legion which doesn't have lots of character when you first see it if that makes sense um but yeah yeah first man is i think me and george share like a lack of knowledge on being able to make a super informed decision on this i think for like, me it's the only I've only dipped my toe into like the heresy novels and stuff, but I'm not really into traitor legions either, which kind of goes against the grain of what I'm going to say. My favorite would be Horus, but he, he does a bit of a U-turn really, doesn't he? I mean, he was a great guy before he <laughs> did no, that. Well, know. I think he probably is my favorite. I know the obvious one for me to say is the lion. Hmm. Um, and he is up there. He does have the best 40k Primark model, but... <laughs> But in terms of like story wise and everything, I do think Horus. Yeah, I do think I like Horus. Just to setting all that off, we don't have we don't have any of it. I think it's one of those things where you need to do. Don't quite, have any of it without him. So we might as well. Uh, I think you need to do quite a deep dive on the lore stuff because I think where I struggled was sometimes it wasn't necessarily that the character wasn't cool; it was that I didn't find the writing compelling. Yeah. So like I read Fear to Tread, uh, which is one of the 30k novels. 
following the blood angels and i didn't find sanguinis particularly compelling in that book I agree. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not a cool character do yeah, you know what i mean yeah. so i'd have to like you'd have to go you spend a lot of time you trying need, to research yeah. everyone you need to favorite. read some of the new uh the new new ones on terror so you just on oh, oh my god yeah they're yeah. on my list yeah, yeah. you need to read yeah. those they are everything you could think of the primarchs being as in the way they're described and the way they are those books like dan Abnett, absolutely annihilated in a good way um but yeah yeah i think i like um watched the law masters thing on it was either specifically on mortarion or, or it was on death guard in general and i think that Didn't you have a death guard army yeah, but again, that wasn't really like super. It wasn't like I was like really interested in the law. Just happenstance that you had those models. I just liked they. They came in the um in the start. They set. came in the starter set that year, and and I thought the models looked cool. But yeah, Mortarian, I think is a is a good one. The whole story of the Death Guard is is pretty cool as well. I think actually this kind of thing where they don't they don't feel like they're being plagued, if you like. They feel yeah, like yeah. they're being gifted. Yeah, um, that's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, nice one. Uh, hobby hack this is our little closing weekly tradition where we share a quick tip little hobby hack with you uh, my one this week it's not really a hack per se more a, more an admission that I was wrong on something oh it's even better that's, yeah. that's better but it is a hack because hopefully there's someone else out there who's in similar mindset of me maybe you can uh, use this we've spoken to death by on air and off air about using uh, brushes to base cut like sand and stuff like that when we're doing the bases I always say I like to paint the bases separately which I will stand by however the reason I like to paint them separately was always so that I could spray them with the airbrush or with a rattle can whatever and then I found this brush that I didn't know I had that was like a terrain dry brush like massive thing like flat one not, not a round brush like a flat sort of thing you'd like cut in to paint a wall with not quite as big <laughs> so you have been doing some DIY then yeah, there you go <laughs> yeah. uh, I found that and I for whatever reason just decided randomly during my basing woes for these Black Templars to, to use that because I couldn't be bothered to get all the airbrush out because it's packed away now. And uh, yeah, it turns out it's actually pretty quick doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rather than having to set the airbrush up. And or like go outside to spray something and oh, it's raining and I'll have to do it in half an hour. Or oh, the airbrush is packed away. Let's get out the compressor and hose and clean it all and put my mask on and all that. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Basing with brushes. I'm coming yeah. around on it. I'm still not sure how I'd work that into having the model on the base because you can't really use as big of a brush, right? Oh, well, you can if you're careful. Yeah. You can if you're careful. It's James's whole thing is get tidy with a big brush and you'll be you'll be laughing with a smaller one. So mm -hmm. I think you should try... on. What you should do is get one of your competition Black Templars. Dry brush it. Put them... <laughs> <laughs> might, might have bonded it to the base. Yeah. Well, like solid, yeah. solid connection. Solid, yeah, not no, no activator. It. Might have bonded it, and then force yourself to dry brush the base in with the biggest brush you can find, and you've got to be tidy and not ruin the model. That's what I think. You That's your do. Christmas challenge. Yeah. Thank God those models are varnished. <laughs> <laughs> have you got any tips for what's your favourite brush look, to use? Look, that sort of stuff. It is the season of giving. Okay, and and I've been saving two up for this episode because I've got two more hobby hacks. I've got two more hobby hacks for you. Three hobby hacks. Three hobby hacks. Episode. Yeah, Go on yeah. Then. It's not only is it the the the, the month of red. It's the sanguine art, but you're getting th you're getting three, three, for, one, three yeah. for one. Three for one. Yeah, that's the best deal ever. Um, in answer to your one, yeah, but but with using a brush of basing, yeah, like I tend I like using really sort of like tactical dry brush with like a really small brush to like do that on on bases if i have stuck the model to the to the base if i have done the bases separate then yeah like you said those big flat ones are actually really really good um but uh the two hobby hacks that i've got for you uh and for everyone this 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 month on this episode are hopefully going to help with a few things so um I, I, we, I get asked quite a bit about like liquid mask and like and like using that to like sort of section an area off or, or do this or whatever. Um, and I've actually been using cling film quite a lot. Cling film? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been using cling film quite a lot recently. So Never uh, heard someone so, use that in so, that context. So yeah. In the States, is that saran wrap? I, think I don't know what it's called. Plastic wrap? Whatever you use for the kitchen for yeah. sealing food. So, so I've been using cling film because it because of that, because of that property that it has where it clings to the object that it touches, if that makes sense. Um, if I needed to do like a shoulder pad or like, so let's just say I, you know, uh, oh, yeah, I wanted to paint a shoulder pad. This might be genius. Yeah. So oh, let's hear about this. So, could go no, so, I think this is genius. So, so what you do is you get some cling film 
you wrap the model and then using a, a clay shaper, which has got the rubberized end. Just sort of push it in. Yeah, you push it in with the clay shaper. A little bit of water on the clay shaper so it doesn't stick to the cling film. And you can, the cling film will adhere to the surface that you're putting it around and cover all the areas that you don't want. And then you spray it. Um, you spray it with the airbrush or spray it with a rattle can or even even paint it with a brush without worry of over over painting or whatever. And you just pull the cling film off. And the cling film doesn't stick to the model and damage any paintwork that you've done, but it protects it. Why do you um, prefer that to the liquid mask? Just for time purposes. And like if you don't get all the liquid mask off, you know, like and you've you got drying times. You've got drying well. times that stuff. I've always it's, had trouble with like liquid mask stuff or like even blue tech and stuff like pulling paint off. Like I've always had that. I like yeah. the Vallejo liquid mask. What I found with it though is you can't just like put one coat on and let it dry and then rip it off because it's going to start crumbling. It's like It's literally liquid latex. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, but you have to build up quite a few coats to get it to come off cleanly. Yeah. Otherwise it will start, cr if, it, if you do like a nice thin coat of it, it's just going to crumble and turn into mess. Yeah. So I used it right on the banner for that Night Lord that I'm painting. The banner's obviously attached um, and the banner's white on the original OG artwork. So I'd obviously got the really lovely sort of purpley blue on the armor and everything that when I first put it on. I just, I was like, right, okay, I should have sprayed the banner first. Really should have done that. And then I could have just marked, covered the banner over. But I was already up, you know, in that position where I obviously I had to, had to then, um, then paint the, paint the, 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 the banner set once the model was painted. So I literally just cling filmed all the way around the model and pulled it tight around the bottom of the banner pole, pulled it really tight, pushed it all in so there was no gaps with the, with the with clay shaper. Uh, and then airbrushed it white, pulled it off. Perfect. I think that's genius. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. I've got one more. I've got one more. I mean, you're on a roll. But one more. This is either going to ruin it or add to it. This one was a fluke discovery. He's going to be, right, and you so, get a toothbrush. No, and, <laughs> <laughs> no electric one, John. No, no electric toothbrush in this. So, um, so we all paint like models that have got separate heads and things like that. Um, and, and I like painting bare heads separately. And doing all the skin by airbrush, or if you do paint it with a brush, you paint it separately, and then obviously attach the head to the model once it's once it's painted. On that note, I think one of my favourite quotes from you was that you used a head rotisserie. Oh, the head yeah. rotisserie. Yeah, the head, was head rotisserie. That's an old school yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. If for anyone who wants to know, it's one of the, the humble shot glasses with loads of holes drilled in it, two mil uh, bits of co copper pot, uh, copper rod, or uh, the thicker paper big clip. paper, paper bits. Glue them all in with super glue, and then you just drill holes in the bottom of the heads, and you've got like a lovely. That's another hobby hack. He's, yeah. he's flying for it. Yeah, he's, okay. yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it really it's is Christmas the season, it's season of giving. giving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, there's not going to be like twenty. It's not like a like an advent. Right, tier list. Yeah, twenty six. tips. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> the, the, this last one is is happened. We should by do apps. like the <laughs> twelve days of Christmas like song versus James like singing, <laughs> no. singing different hats. There is you do different not hobby want me singing. Trust me. <laughs> Um, so, so this last one happened by pure fluke and it was something that I, I literally, it was because I was at the desk when I was sitting and I was trying to work out how best to do this. Um, and it was before the cling film actually, um, I had something next to me, which then a light bulb came on. Um, I had a metal model or a model that had the head attached and it was a bare head. Now, obviously I want to paint, um, paint the skin on the flesh, uh, of the face. Um, so uh, I was like, how am I going to do this? Like, you know, I want to airbrush it to get it nice and smooth and do all the sort of different tones and stuff I'm doing on the skin, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was like, I don't really know how I'm going to do this without overspraying too much on the model. And obviously metal models, it, it was quite a decent cast metal model, but you don't want to put too many thick layers of paint on there anyway to obscure detail or, you know, anything. So I was like, how am I going to do this? And I conveniently looked to my left and there was a hole punch. So, so. I'll see where this is going. What? What I did was made the model a bib. And what I had done was got the corner of the bit of paper, hole punched the corner, and then I put the head through the hole that I'd hole punched on the bit of paper. So you went to the barber shop. Yeah, you barber shop. fully, yeah. Yep. And then I managed to airbrush it all the, from all the tones and colors and angles and et cetera, et cetera. I took the bib off. I hate what a good idea and, this and it is. Had, yeah. And it had, it had a tiny little bleed area around the bottom of the neck that I just tidied up. And that was it. So yeah, also genius. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, I hate it when he comes up with good so ideas because <clears> I can't rip it. It's, I can't yeah, rip it it's, uh, it. <laughs> yeah, it's hobby hacks. are like buses. You wait for ages for a good one, and then yeah. two come along at once. Yeah, I've yeah. been saving them for Christmas. Cheeky little special for you all. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. they're very good. They're yeah. both very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, solid. Cling film, cling film, Tupperware, and the whole punch will be on everyone's Christmas list. So yeah, so there, there you go. go. Stationary supplies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Well, uh, on that note, thank everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. Uh, if you would like to support the show, uh, you can do so in a number of ways. Uh, of course, subscribing to the channel, like I said earlier. And uh, we also have a Patreon tier just for you podcast listeners. So if you head to the description of this video, you can find lots of wonderful perks uh, for the podcast down in there. And uh, also the C-Studios Discord as well. Thank you very much. We will catch you next week. Right, I can finally take this thing out. I'm, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being scared I'm going to either sneeze or, or it's going to get sucked up my nose through breathing through my nose. Um, it, mate, it's been so difficult to turn around and look at. I don't know if it's obvious, but on this episode, I'm literally like just staring at George because every time I turn around, I was going to laugh. I kept forgetting that you had it in and they would look up at him and I'll try not to laugh. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I'm glad that that has now been and gone and never to be repeated. Until so, yeah. until 100k subscribers. Then we do it for yeah, real. Then we do it for real on air. There'll be proof yeah, yeah. It won't, won't be happening